Hello and welcome to this video for Lab Activity 0. Now because the calculations and statistics are long and tedious, especially when using real data, the use of a statistical package is all but necessary, especially now in the 21st century when we have an emphasis on data mining. In this class we're going to use R. The R statistical environment offers us a chance to understand the calculations involved in statistics. That's the pedagogical hook for me. It also allows us to perform Monte Carlo analysis easy, which is going to be important in you better understanding randomness, probability distributions, and statistics. This laboratory activity is going to show you how to download and install R and to set up your class folders logically. So let's open up our browser. My browser seems to be Opera. And let's go to the website CRAN, C R A N, dot R projects. Dot org and hit enter and it brings this up download and install R determine what operating system you have first if you got Linux you'd click on the Linux if you don't already have R installed with your Linux distribution R comes with quite a few of them uh, if you have Mac OS X this is where you'd click and then you'd click on R-3.2.3.pkg .3 dot pkg, uh, PKG. I have Windows, so I'm going to click on Windows, and I'm going to either click on Install R for the first time or Base. Download R 3.2.3, .3. and once you click on that, the usual window is going to pop up, ask you where do you want to save it. I'm going to save it just in my default folder, because I know where that is, and it's going to take a while to download about 50 seconds. So we'll pause this and I'll come back when it's downloaded. And the downloading's done. It's located here in where I saved it. It's a temporary folder. That's what the icon will look like if you make it larger. Then now the next step, that was the download step, the next step is the install step. Double click. When you double click on that you'll get the typical security warning. You'll click yes or run. And you'll get the user account and hit yes. Then you're asked to select the language. Let's be daring and go with English. And then we get the typical setup. Next, next. I'm going to set it into my default. All the defaults are acceptable. And you get to this window. If you've got a 32 bit machine, you're only going to have the 32 bit and the core files checked. You won't be able to check the 64 bit. If you've got a 64 bit machine like this is, all four will be uh, checked. Check as many as you can. Next, do you want to customize the startup? Yeah, I could, but let's go with no, the default, uh, default, default, and then it's getting ready to install. Installation was done, that was rather fast. Well, since I hit pause, it's going to be fast. I'm going to hit finish. And what happens on the desktop? We get this R icon, blue R icon. If we've got a 32 bit machine, we get two of them if we have a 64 bit. If we've got a 64-bit, we don't want to run the 32, so we'll just go ahead and delete that. And we'll start R from this blue R icon. So that was step two. Step one was downloading. Step two is installing, and we just installed. Step three is going to be create the folder structure for this course. Let's go over to this temporary. I'm going to delete that because I don't need it. It's a different program, so I'll keep it there. Go into my documents. I'm going to create a folder just for this course. We're going to call this folder stat methods. There it is, S methods. If I can spell stat methods. There we go. And I've created it. Mac people would create it in their own way. I created it using Windows Vista. I think I have Vista. This might be 7. Um, but whatever version you have, you know how to create your folders. Double click, I'm inside the stat methods folder. I'm going to create a couple subfolders. So the first subfolder I'm going to create is the assignments. In this folder, I'm going to put it, I'm going to have subfolders for every single assignment for this course. And I keep all my assignment documents in each of those folders because I want to be organized, I want to be structured. I don't want to have to wonder, huh, where did I put that file? because I will know exactly where I put that file. If it has to do with assignment B3, 
guess what? I'm going to look for it in the assignment B3 folder. Second subfolder I'm going to create is lab activities. If I can spell, if I can type, there we go. In the lab activities, I'm going to create subfolders for all my labs. So the lab that we're doing now is lab 0. So I'm going to create a lab 0 folder. And I'm going to put the lab 0 document in here. We got lab 1 coming up pretty soon, lab 0, 1. So I'm going to put all of my lab 1 stuff in lab 1. And we can keep creating more and more of the, the lab activity subfolders. But we'll go ahead and save that for a rainy day. And then we'll create one for projects. And that will hold the two term projects, uh, term project 1 and term project 2. And let's go ahead and create a folder for handouts. And these will be the handouts that you download from D2L, some of the very helpful handouts that you don't realize are helpful until you actually read through them and, and try to work with them. That was step three, the folder structure. So we're actually done with lab zero. Nothing to hand in. All you have because of lab zero is R downloaded and installed and a folder structure that actually makes sense. I have to emphasize once again, keep the folder structure going throughout the course. If I ask you where a file is, you should be able to tell me what folder it's in. You shouldn't have to wander around your file system looking for it. That spends too much time. It wastes too much time. So, end of lab zero. Hopefully this was helpful. Take care. Mm -hmm.